Hello, I'm Michael Schatz, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in Practice. Our journal is celebrating our 10-year anniversary of publication, and I'd like to share with you in this presentation where we have been over this past decade and where we are going. This is the cover of our January 2023 special anniversary issue, and as it says, our journal has been dedicated to clinicians in practice and their patients for the past 10 years. In these slides, I want to show and tell you how you can join us in this quest and the reasons you would want to do so. Specifically in this presentation, I want to share our journal mission and vision, some selected statistics of our 10-year growth, and highlights of what JACI in practice offers authors, reviewers, and readers. I want to tell you a little bit about our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, acknowledge our editorial team and editorial board, describe the special review articles in our January 2023 issue, and conclude by letting you know specifically how you can be involved. The vision of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in Practice is to be an indispensable resource for clinicians who manage patients with asthma, allergic, immunologic, and related conditions in order to optimize the care and health of these patients. Our mission is to provide novel, valid, generalizable, and impactful information to support evidence-based clinical decisions in the diagnosis and management of these conditions. This vision and mission has guided us in all of our activities over the past 10 years and will continue to do so as we move forward. This slide highlights some aspects of the growth of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in practice over the past 10 years. Our inaugural issue was in January 2013. Since then, we've published 78 issues and five supplements with over 20,000 pages of content. Regarding submissions, we had fewer than 450 each of the first three years and have had at least 1,435 submissions each of the past three years. Our total yearly number of pages grew from 708 in 2013 to 3,348 in 2022. We obtained 696 reviews in 2013 compared to 2,450 in 2022, involving 243 reviewers in 2013 and 599 in 2022. We have definitely grown substantially in a number of ways. One of the most fulfilling aspects of our growth has been the steady rise in our impact factor with a more than doubling between our initial impact factor in 2015 and our most recent 2021 impact factor. This impact factor of 11.022 ranks us third out of 28 journals in the allergy category and 19th out of 162 journals in the immunology category. We are also very pleased to see that our total sites increased 44 percent between 2020 and 2021. Although we are an official journal of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, we want to be an international journal, and I think we are accomplishing that goal. We currently have subscribers from 72 countries. We've had website visitors from 121 countries. We've had corresponding authors from 89 countries and reviewers from 53 countries. The three main stakeholders for any journal are its authors, reviewers, and readers. I'd like to show you some of the most important things we believe the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in practice offers these key individuals. Regarding authors, I've already mentioned our international audience, we have an average time from submission to first decision of only 13.3 days, 
and an average time from article acceptance to online publication of six days. In addition, we offer expedited reviews for qualifying randomized clinical trials. One of the most important elements of what we offer authors are our efforts to promote their articles so that the content reaches as many folks as possible. Each article is posted on Twitter and Facebook. The highlights box summary of each original article is presented on monthly podcasts available on our website, as well as Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and YouTube. And selected articles are chosen to be the subjects of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology Virtual Journal Club and the Allergy Immunology Twitter Journal Club to be summarized as practice changers in emails that reach the entire Quad AI membership, to be described in research summaries posted on the Quad AI website, to be included in topic-based publisher international promotional campaigns, and for promotional open access. We are so appreciative of the expertise and dedication of our reviewers, and we could clearly not function without them. We try to acknowledge their critical role in several ways. We have a dedicated reviewer webpage with a variety of resources and specific updates for reviewers. We offer continuing medical education credits, up to 15 per year. And we try to recognize our reviewers in a number of ways. Their names are published in the journal yearly. Five reviewers are honored each year with outstanding reviewer awards based on reviewer quantity and quality. And letters of commendation are sent annually to reviewers who provided an exemplary number of quality reviews the prior year. This year, we were pleased to send out these letters to approximately 20% of our 2022 reviewers. And finally, of course, our main audience for everything we do is our readers. One of our signature features is our theme-related review articles. Each issue has a clinically relevant theme with at least four theme-related review articles. The next two slides show our 2023 theme issue subjects, along with the coordinators who so expertly develop the lineups of topics and speakers. In February, we will have drug allergy, March, hot topics and asthma, April, food allergy, May, atopic dermatitis, June, immunodeficiency, July, urticaria and angioedema, August, anaphylaxis, September, biologics, October, newer diagnostic methods in allergy, November, COVID-19 and allergy immunology, and December, women's health in allergy immunology. Each issue contains other review articles as well, and we offer original clinical research that is novel, valid, generalizable, and clinically impactful in the form of our full-length original articles and our briefer clinical communications. We have other content as well that we feel adds substantially to the educational value of the journal. Editorials, correspondence and replies, images in allergy that are pictures that intrinsically impart important clinical information that the allergist immunologist should visually recognize to provide optimal clinical care. Our difficult cases series, these are invited case reports and slide presentations of the clinical teachings derived from the challenging cases, and our practice pearls feature, solutions to practical challenges that can be applied by allergists immunologists to their patient care. We have several features that I think are of interest to authors, reviewers, and readers. Our practice options from beyond our pages, case studies and health disparities, and our newest feature, topics in quality improvement and patient safety. Our practice options from beyond our pages feature is coordinated by Matthew Rank and Julie Wang. These are published studies beyond the pages of in practice and JCI 
that have a high likelihood of changing practice or are otherwise important for our clinician readers. The feature provides a critical appraisal of the article, puts the research into context, and provides clinical recommendations based on the findings. The practice options from Beyond Our Pages features are written by a fellow in training, partnered with a faculty member, and don't require an invitation. Our case studies in health disparities feature is coordinated by Tamara Perry and Julie Wang in collaboration with the Quad AI Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. These are case reports with particular attention given to highlighting social determinants of health that are relevant to allergy immunology clinical care and had an impact on the case. The presentation also provides practical, actionable steps that a clinician can apply with similar patients. And our newest feature, Topics in Quality Improvement and Patient Safety, coordinated by Kimberly Blumenthal and Nicholas Ryder. These can be original articles, studies of practices in improving quality in healthcare, tools for quality improvement, effectiveness of improvement intervention, patient safety, and health equity, or review articles that don't need to be invited, covering subjects such as process improvement, quality measurement, safety culture, adverse event reporting, root cause analysis, and patient experience. The inaugural review article and editorial introducing the feature appeared in our December 2022 issue. There are a few other items that JECI in practice offers that I'd like to mention. Each original article has a highlights box that summarizes what is already known about the topic, what does this article add to our knowledge, and how does this study impact current management guidelines. And we offer a number of continuing medical education credit opportunities. At least three CME eligible review articles are included in each issue, and we offer CME for the difficult cases feature as well. And we also have some valuable virtual offerings, email alerts for new issues, articles in press, or specific topic collections, a regularly updated website resource regarding drug allergy, our quarterly virtual journal club, a webinar eligible for CME, both in the live and recorded version, and monthly podcasts summarizing the original research in each issue available on our website, as well as Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and YouTube. Our journal is very interested in the problem of health disparities in asthma and allergy, and we have embarked upon several initiatives to try to address that important issue in the ways a journal can do so. We have a diversity statement that can be accessed from our homepage, we added a diversity, equity, and inclusion activities coordinator to our editorial board. We have a health disparities collection that currently contains 120 articles and is growing regularly. We have a diversity, equity, and inclusion reviewer classification so that reviewers particularly interested in this subjects can be chosen to review these articles. And we have the feature I described, our case studies in health disparities feature. We've recently updated our author instructions for reporting race and ethnicity, as well as sex and gender. We now have more specific guidance in our author instructions for studies focusing on health disparities by race or ethnicity. We had a very robust health disparities theme issue this past April. Our editorial manager submission website is collecting author and reviewer gender race and ethnicity as of this past June. We plan to use this information as a baseline in our attempt to increase our diversity, and we are currently exploring additional initiatives. I do want to acknowledge our dedicated team of medical editors who have worked diligently over the past 10 years to facilitate everything I have shown you. Our deputy editors, Robert Zeiger and Scott Sischerer, our associate editor, David Kahn, and our 2022 guest editor, David Lang. 
And then there is our stellar editorial board, and I do mean stellar. I want to keep this slide on for a few minutes so that you can appreciate the depth and breadth of the expertise they provide and their international stature. One of the things we asked of our editorial board this year was to author a series of review articles for our special January anniversary issue highlighting the most important advances of the past decade in the spectrum of subjects we cover, and they have produced a superb collection of articles. Diagnosis and Assessment of the Asthma, Asthma Management in Children and Adults, Non-allergic rhinitis, allergic rhinitis and immunotherapy, chronic rhinosinusitis, anaphylaxis, atopic dermatitis, food allergy and eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases, drug hypersensitivity, urticaria and angioedema, immunodeficiency, diversity, equity, and inclusion, teleallergy, and value-based cost-effective care. We believe these articles are must-reading for clinicians who provide care for patients with asthma, allergic, immunologic, and related conditions. We so appreciate a number of other things from our editorial board. There are many excellent reviews, their time and expertise in skillfully coordinating our theme issues, and their extremely valuable input on choice of theme topics, selecting new editorial board members, recommending new reviewers, and other journal policies and activities. I do want to mention that new editorial board members are added each year, and we are always on the lookout for individuals who have shown interest in the journal, especially as reviewers, and who are accomplished in our field. Finally, regarding our editorial board, I want to acknowledge those members who provide additional extremely helpful input in specific, very important areas. Our biostatistical coordinator, Dave Major, our diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, Bridget Jones, and our social media coordinator, Ann Chen Wu. In conclusion, for the past 10 years, we've been guided by our articulated vision and mission statements. As we move into our second decade, we pledge to continue to pursue those goals avidly. With the support of our editorial board, authors, reviewers, and readers, we hope to make an ever-increasing impact on the world of allergy immunology and on the lives of our clinician readers and their patients. To learn more about the journal, please visit our website. To subscribe, that's the URL. For questions or to become a reviewer, please email us. And to submit a manuscript, visit our submission website. I thank you very much for viewing this Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in Practice 10th Anniversary video. I hope I've given you a sense of our journal's past and present, and that you will choose to join us for our future as authors, reviewers, and or readers. Thanks once more.